Warren, uh, thanks for your time. Who's right there? Is the government making the inflation situation worse right now, making it harder for families? You heard about Jim Chalmers there saying the cost of living pressures, we understand them, we know about them. But isn't the government partly responsible for those? At the very least, they're not helping with the new spending, $10 billion in the coming year. They've got tax cuts, which are coming, which are going to be welcome relief because people are under pressure. Um, so they're not helping. And you could make the case that this extra spending is putting pressure on demand, putting pressure on inflation and therefore interest rates. But it's a problem we have to face and the RBA has to deal with what they've got. And these numbers today, and we've always got to be a bit careful with the monthly numbers, but this was a much higher than expected result on the back of a higher expected quarterly number that we got just a month ago. But have a look at this. Say, for example, it looked like it was bottoming out and all of a sudden to see it suddenly start to trend back up these last couple of months. That's the worrying sign for the government because that is all homegrown inflation. It's nothing coming in from overseas. Well, that's it. I mean, the, the overall inflation is now looking like it's stopped falling well above the RBA target. And, of course, when you strip out those global factors, which had been the main reason inflation was falling, you can see domestic inflation is probably running somewhere between four and five, which it has been for six months now, and what is worrying the RBA, of course. And there's some hints that it might be picking up a little bit this year. It's too early to tell that we've got an uptick in inflation, but it's certainly stopped coming down towards that. OK, so here's the major issues that have created... You know, there's the labour force data. You can see that there. Or in fact, this is the inflation numbers, I'd say, not labour force. But you can see here coming through that, you know, you've got insurance is the big one here, that really there's not much can be done about this. Tobacco, obviously, prices there. Uh, and the other one that was pretty big was fuel prices during this period. Now, that's transitory. That comes and goes. Mm. The insurance one, that's the sticky one. Insurance is sticky. Uh, a lot of these domestic services, food in the month was up a bit. And, of course, rents. Rents are just continuing to push up. And if we took out the rental assistance from the government and some of these other subsidies... Uh, inflation would be even higher, uh, measured by this. OK, by this so the government says, we're your friend, we're actually doing something to try and help you out. But the reality is it's also then saying, well, look, that nasty old Reserve Bank, they're independent, so they're going to do their own thing. So they're kind of sheeting a lot of the responsibility back to the Reserve Bank. That's not how really economies should work. It should be that the two are working hand in glove. But they're kind of working a little bit against each other right now. Look, I think the government has under, underestimated this inflation. I think a lot of governments and central banks all around the world have, and they probably haven't done as much as they should have. And, of course, that means the Reserve Bank is left to carry the can, and it brings a serious question about whether a 4.35% cash rate is going to be enough to return this country to price stability. But I... you've been saying this for months, right? It's not as though this is new for you. This is actually something you've said, this is coming. They've got to be aware of this. And this is the reason why the bias towards higher interest rates remains there today. It does. I actually think that they will raise rates. I mean, I've made that call before the budget, after we saw that inflation number, the stronger employment numbers. I mean, unemployment might be up, but we created 38,000 jobs a month before and we're averaging about 30,000 a month for this year so far. So there's a, a robustness, a resilience to the economy. The inflation is not disappearing. The cost pressures are there. The domestic inflation is there. And it's all up to the Reserve Bank. And if they don't do it, no one else will, because the government's certainly not really doing it. But then there's an election coming up. The government wanted to take some credit if interest rates had been falling, even though, of course, they're not responsible for them, but they wanted to say, look, we've got the economy in shape where the, uh, the interest rates are falling. Now the interest rates are not falling, so they're saying we've given you cost of living relief. But the reality is behind the scenes that the government, and particularly the amount of tax it's taking out of people's pockets right now, that also is contributing to some of this inflation. Well, we know now from the budget papers the estimates for bracket creep, and it was $25 billion in this year, um, $17 billion last year. Over the last four years, I think it's adding up to around $70 billion. That's a huge extra tax burden on the household sector. We can see from the national accounts that that is having just as big an impact on household disposable incomes as interest rate increases. And this idea that it's all about the RBA and all about rate hikes and therefore don't raise rates so households are under pressure. Well, that's not right. But Jim Chalmers doesn't want that message going into an election. He doesn't want to suddenly have people pointing at him and saying, hang on, our taxes are going up because inflation pushed our wages up, which means we're in higher tax brackets, which means you're taking more out of our pockets. Mm. He wants it said, oh, you've given us cost of living relief, you've tried to help out as best as you can. It's really the old supermarkets and it's the Reserve Bank that have actually jammed you. That's the message the government will try and get That's out. That's the politics of it. Um, but the reality is that extra... 
70, 80 billion a year in income taxes because of bracket creep is being spent. We've got deficits for as far as the eye can see. And that's why many economists think this is an inflationary fiscal stance and the pressure is all on the RBA to... So I've got only a short amount of time. The Reserve Bank thought about raising rates last month, did not. When, if it did go, would it go? I can't see how they can't raise rates in June. I mean, we know that this cash rate's not high enough. Get it done, because the earlier you do it, the less you have to do, and the more chance we have of avoiding a bad downturn in the economy. So I think they're going to go in June. I think it's the only option they've got, given how close we know they were in, in early May. There you go. Warren Hogan, always good to chat to you. Many thanks for your time today.